episode. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Steven Universe podcast. Today, I'm so excited because we've got Matthew Moy, the voice of Lars, making his first appearance in the show. He's going to be talking all about landing the role, meeting Rebecca for the first time, and working with the crew universe and all the other great voice actors in the show. We've also got Steven Universe storyboard artist Lamar Abrams back on the show, too. Lamar and Matthew have some great stories about Lars of the Stars and Lars and Sadie's relationship. So let's get things started now with Matthew Moy. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me. What's up, Crooniverse? Lars here, finally taking over this podcast after 50-some-odd <laughs> episodes. Finally, we're <laughs> holding my way through. <laughs> it's time. No, I, I'm so glad. Thank you for inviting me on this. This is so fun. Thank you. For sure. So I wanted to just sort of ask you about your background and voice acting and stuff. Like, so my first question is, where did you get your start in Hollywood? So before I moved to Hollywood, I actually studied as a voice actor. Um, I didn't really want to do on-camera acting. I just wanted to do voice acting. So I studied for two years at the school called Voice Tracks back in San Francisco. And then eventually I found an agent and moved my way to Hollywood. Very nice. I didn't know they had schools like that. That's awesome. Yeah, so... T- all the people, because this is how I was as a little kid. You know, I'm still a guy who loves cartoons, loves animation, loves anime. And when I was a 12-year-old kid, I was like, how am I going to get into this business? So um, eventually I learned that there are schools that exist. There are schools in L.A. There are schools all over the nation that will teach you specifically voice acting. If you ever want to learn anything, just go to school for it. It's as easy as that. Okay, cool. Uh, So do you remember, like, when and, like, how you first found out about Steven Universe in particular? So I just got it the normal way from my um, voice acting agent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually the way that happens is you get an email that notifies you that you have an audition. And I I think, you know, a lot of the time for cartoons... um, the way they pitch things or present things. I mean, I know Steven Universe is like short 15-minute episodes anyway, but they always pitch things in these shorts. So the pilot pitch was this for this short 15-minute thing called Steven Universe, and I got the audition for... Gosh, I, I think I got the both the audition for Steven and Lars. I can't remember if it was at the same time, but I auditioned for both of them mm-hmm. and then eventually got the call back for I think both of them and then we narrowed it down to Lars. Awesome. So I think that but I, I didn't know anything about the audition except for what they gave me in the sides, which is said, you know, Lars is this angsty teenage kid who's got <laughs> who uh likes to pick on Steven. <laughs> right. That's so crazy that you had to audition for Steven too. That would have been very different timeline. <laughs> that was fun. I think I was the only adult maybe auditioning from I don't remember. Um, so I just tried to do a much higher version because Lars pretty much sounds like me. He's he's a little more uh, amplified for Lars, but um, for Steven, I just kind of pitch up Lars's voice, <laughs> and it sounds like Lars is very excited and on a lot of coffee. <laughs> So so you got the information about the character. Did you get, like, a design with that? Yeah, yeah. So originally Lars's character had black hair, and I think his gauges or his earrings were different, and his head shape may have been different, but I do remember he had black hair instead of orange hair. Yeah. If you all watch the pilot, we all look very different. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. The The whole vibe is so different. So, like, what inspires you about acting in general, either live action or voiceover? Oh, they're both so different. They both work different parts of my brain, you know? I just, what inspires me is when I see good acting, good acting that reaches me, that I connect to, because that's what I want to do with my acting, is I want to reach people and connect to them. That's one Mm -hmm. thing I love about Steven Universe is... Besides, you know, the wonderful stories and characters and all this stuff that Rebecca's come up with, me as the actor, I I love when I I can reach people and when they relate to Lars, you know, that character. So, So what inspires me is to make my emotions as an actor congruent with the emotions of the character to reach people, to inspire them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That was kind of a roundabout answer. <laughs> no, no, no. I totally get what you're saying. Like you, um, in terms of like when you see a character for the first time and you're sort of trying to get your yeah. wrap your head around them, what's your like approach to that in particular? 
Uh, so when you see the character for the first time and you want to kind of get a handle on them. Mm-hmm. So in the acting world, we call that your hardest job you'll ever have as an actor is when there's a character you don't get. But someone presents you the audition, you're like, oh, you got to do this, though. Got to figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. The easiest job you have as an actor when you're like, oh, I get this piece of cake. I know this guy. So what we do is we have to find, um, this is the way I do it, I find a piece of myself that's in the character, no matter who the character is. If it's a cop, or if it's, you know, a space cowboy, or, you know, if it's an alien, or, you know, whatever, I've got to find a part of myself in that character so I can relate to them, so I can kind of figure them out. That, that's where I think the foundation is, where you can build all the layers on top of that. Right, right. So, like, for, yeah, so the, my first job for doing Lars, even though I already kind of knew where this guy was coming from, I'm like, well, where do I see myself in Lars and everything else I'll build around that? You know, what his insecurities are, what are things he likes, how he approaches things. So that's how I approach things. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, you, you're kind of channeling your own personal experiences into Lars what do you what do you bring to Lars that's like a personal like I mean not too personal but you know like <laughs> um you know I, I mean the one thing I love about Lars is that I think no matter how much people may protest everyone can relate to Lars Lars is interesting because he works at the place the big donut shop that is kind of central to everybody everybody goes there to get information or to meet other people you know it's kind of like, I want to say kind of like a newsstand place, but it's not. It's where everybody goes to buy donuts. But he's also the one, I mean, there are a lot of human characters in Steven Universe, but he's one of the more, besides Sadie and Greg, uh, he's one of the central human characters, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, everybody kind of, he's kind of the average Joe teenage kid. So, and I feel like all the kids, all the teenagers watching this can relate to Lars. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't relate to Steven, Lars is one of the people they can relate to. Right. So, um, bringing, sorry, going back to your question, what do I bring? Um, You know, I've been, I've I've played both sides before. I picked on people a little bit. Not too bad, everybody, don't worry. (laughs) Um, But um, I've also, majority, I've been, you know, picked on a lot in my life. So I I know what that feels like. So I I know where Lars is coming from when he does it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important thing. Okay, yeah. And it's all coming from love, guys. All love. (laughs) And, and Lars really is a complicated character. So coming up next, storyboard artist Lamar Abrams joins Matthew Moy and I to talk about Lars and the Cool Kids and Lars's relationship with Steven. All right, I'm here with Matthew Moy, voice of Lars, and Lamar Abrams, the voice of Buck Dewey and storyboard artist. Thank you guys so much for talking to me. Thank you. What's up, Crewniverse? Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about Lars. Lars is obviously a complex character, even from the beginning. So, like, how did you guys see his role within Beach City, like, when the show was starting out? I think I was a little in the dark for, you know, the larger plans we had for Lars in the beginning. Um, I think, to me, he just kind of seemed like, you know, this character that was, uh, you know, typical kind of teen character someone you know kind of giving Stephen a hard time like one of the only people giving Stephen a hard time uh early on but then as we uh went on and developed the character he kind of became a little more complex which made him like really interesting he's just like you know trying to grow up and figure himself out and I thought I don't know that's a really cool character to have within uh Stephen Universe same I I agree um except when I first um read the character description for Lars I was like I know who this guy is um you know from you know being a guy who picks on people <laughs> um uh, well, a lot of the time, you know, when people pick on other people, it's because they, I think, they admire them a lot or they want to interact with them somehow and they don't quite know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So that's just their outlet of messing with them, you know? So I think in my mind, that's how I knew he was going to be more than just a, you know, a two dimensional character. Yeah, I didn't know where Lars would be going either um, throughout the season. Even though he was in the pilot episode, I was like, yeah, he's just one of those, you know, angsty teen characters who's probably got a heart of gold. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. You, you, we didn't know. That's what I did. Isn't there yeah. somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
so yeah, like you talk about like his insecurities and stuff about his whole like first part of his arc was like just trying to fit in with the cool kids, which seems so far away now. It's crazy. What did you think about like him trying to sort of posture and make his way, like become part of that group? Well, I think that's just part of Lars's MO. He always wants to fit in with everybody. You know, I think he's cut from the same cloth as Steven, but he's the other side of it. You know, Steven is very accepting. Steven uh, thinks out of the box. He um, thinks with his gut. You know, he does things on gut instinct. But where Lars, he's he's really practical. I think Lars still feels everything. He just doesn't, that's not the way he shows everything. So, you know, when he wants to fit in with the cool kids, it's like how he's trying to fit in with Steven and everybody else and Sadie. I think, too, um, just from getting to know him throughout the series, he seems to give people as much as they give him. Like, I think if someone is outgoing to him, like, you know, he'll respond in a way that feels safe for him and not give them, like, too much or too little. Like, he gives enough to Steven. Like, he's, you know, kind of been vulnerable around Steven. With the cool kids, it's a different story because, you know, he doesn't know them as well. He wants to get to know them. So I feel like, you know, he puts up this attitude or whatever, but he's... A front, yeah. A front, but he's, you mm-hmm. know, still trying to get them to the place where they know the real him. But it's still hard for him to, like, get there. But he, he's he's trying, which is which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. It, it's fun to see their interactions with, like, the... Because he, he does totally change when he's with the cool kids versus when he's talking to Steven. Mm-hmm. And Sadie. And it's so counterproductive, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like he's trying to meet everyone else's energy, but he because he should just come with his own energy. Yeah, that's deep. <laughs> There's a really funny moment where he's, like, where he pulls out the bingo bongo for the first time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a friend. I I really, I re I rewatched that the other day, and I just saw the, the very first Bingo Bongo, and I had forgotten how how uncomfortable that was. <laughs> was that when he was invited to the dinner party, or like they're like? I think so. Yeah. yeah, and he was talking really fast. Yeah, I, Lars was at the donut shop, and yeah. the thought came. <laughs> oh, and he asked for a caprese salad. <laughs> uh, I remember that part, and then he's like, and then Lars was like. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, we'll be there. Bingo bongo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just so funny because, like, it was, yeah, it was such, like, a low stakes, like, hangout, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't a big <laughs> a deal at all, but he was absolutely losing it. And that's the thing with Lars. To him, it's always, like, a huge thing to try to fit in with the cool kids. And the more he tries, the more, like, <laughs> I feel like he's not himself when he's with them. It was really sad to see that. I I just been thinking about that arc and what happened. Like, he, he made the cake and everything, and uh, and then he he ended up throwing it away. Um, do, you, do you remember, like, what you felt when you saw that? Oh, I was just sad to see food in the trash. I know. I was like, <laughs> so, like someone could have eaten it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't waste that ube. Like, he could have just kept it at home. But I guess he left with it and was just like, ah, uh, this isn't going to work. And, like, he just changed his mind. But um, it was nice to see him, again, open up. Yeah, that was a really nice episode. He almost got there. He almost got there. And even, even like, the biggest thing to me was being able to show that he was a kid that was mixed. You know, his dad's Filipino. Yeah. And just that little bit of insight. I think I didn't his, know that before. Yeah, it was... I think we, like, Rebecca, like, told us, like, at some point, but it was just something that was known to us, and we were like, well, how how are we going to show this? And then, you know, like, his last name is... Is it Bariga? Yeah. And that's, like, you know, it's Filipino last name. And, like, for people, you know, I know people that, like, have that last name. And it's like, oh, hey. Like, you know, people like watching the show, they hear that name. And they're like, what? He's Filipino? And they, like, see the ube. And it was, to me, really refreshing to see something like that revealed without it being, like, someone pointing out that Lars is Filipino. I think it was handled, like, really well. But it was cool to see the reaction of, like, yeah, like you said, a lot of people picked up on it. Mm-hmm. And felt like you know like they were like oh yeah my my like my grandparents made that cake you know and it it, it was really sweet by the way ube is super yummy if no one's ever tried it before yeah i also kind of like taro root right it's kind of potatoey kind of starchy yeah i recently had a ube ice cream 
Oh yeah, I love that. At this place in Game Atwater, changer. I can't remember. I think it's like a Filipino-owned ice cream shop in Atwater, and they have like oh my gosh, ube cones too. Oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> it's really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing with about that episode was like his uh, interaction with Sadie, and I mean we could talk so much about that. Um, mm. What did you? What was your impression of like his relationship with Sadie throughout the series? Well, that's another person. I mean, it's funny because Sadie is Lars, besides Stephen, it's his closest friend, and in some ways, Lars can't be himself around Sadie, and sometimes he's his best self around Sadie. So it's yeah. really weird. If Lars would just stop yeah. fighting with himself. <laughs> yeah, it feels like another very, like, on-the-nose teen thing, too. It's like yeah. you have a close friend or a close group of friends, and sometimes you treat them poorly. And then other times things are going smoothly and things are great. And then maybe because of your own insecurities, you lapse back into this, like, you know, not communicating well and doing something that, like might hurt your friend or piss them off. Oof, um, yeah, I can't believe Lars didn't show up. <laughs> he just had Sadie waiting there. It's uh, like he ditched them. Uh, but he did get picked up or abducted, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still, he could have just ditched them <laughs> on his own. Known. And, you know, like, that could have just been the episode. Like, even if he didn't get kidnapped, it's still a, a thing I could see yeah. Lars doing. And it's such a teen thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I, I wish all the best for Sadie. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I absolutely love Sadie. I love that she's got this whole arc going on right now too. Mm -hmm. It's been cool to see both of them kind of develop um, alongside each other. Like you know, they, they've got they're they're separated right now, but they've both gone. It's changed both of them so much. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They changed so much after uh, yeah that whole wanted arc. You know. Yeah. yeah. Sadie, you know, getting to hang out with the cool kids, and I really. I really liked seeing that for Sadie. Like, it wasn't a thing that was forced. She just kind of was around them in a natural setting, and they mm -hmm. got to connect on something like music and, you know, having a mutual interest, and it all felt really natural. And I'm I'm glad she got to make that kind of connection with other people and doesn't just have to, like, depend on Lars for friendship or, like, yeah, even just Yeah, that's what Steven. I like is how independent they both became because they both matured a lot. And I always loved how... Um, Sadie kind of took care of Lars, but after all those events, they both sort of became independent and weren't relying on each other as much. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a moment, like, uh, that the characters, like, particularly, like, clicked to you or, like, something that they did or said that kind of got to the heart of what they, what they were? Hmm. Oh, man. Well, all of Lars clicked to me. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I saw that, you know, that side sheet when I got that audition, I was like, yeah, I know this guy. Um, but, um, yeah, man, that whole wanted arc was so meaningful and powerful to me, mm -hmm. just as an actor when I got to do it. But also, Lars himself goes through this whole character arc of just, I mean, I, I guess literally death and rebirth, you know, just becoming yeah. this different mature individual and going through this gamut of emotions so that's that was really cool to see him transform like that mm -hmm. and i related to his insecurities i remember when he was i think when he was uh stuck with steven in topaz or something and they had that mm -hmm. yeah. conversation that was just so sweet yeah and real and they both revealed how similar they were but afraid they were yeah which was cool mm -hmm. yeah lars really had to confront his fears in that yeah. moment because like he was stuck in a gem's body like <laughs> <laughs> yeah he didn't really have a choice <laughs> he had to like, go anywhere yeah and and something else i know we'd all love to hear is what it was like making Lars of the Stars. So it's time to talk about Lars's adventures in space. All right, I'm still here with Matt and Lamar. Uh, so let's talk about Lars of the Stars, which is a whole thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> he became a totally different character after his whole space adventure. What was your reaction to, I mean, just like the initial reaction of learning that he was going to go into space and have this this arc i flipped out i was like this is so cool <laughs> yeah when i saw that and then i remember seeing that reaction at comic-con mm -hmm. just the whole crowd went wild it was nuts yeah. he's a space captain now it's nuts though yeah. <laughs> i was really surprised that we were gonna get to do that with him like 
it seemed like he had he still had some stuff to deal with on Earth as far as like his relationship with Sadie and you know the cool kids and Steven and you know he's uh, yeah. put into this situation where he's you know mm-hmm. he has to survive on a different planet and even seeing his relationship with the off colors like him connecting with that group is what really forced him to like meet the changes in his life like yeah, head on and he had a lot to, of things yeah he had to like kind of step up for people that were stepping up for him as well like you know they were there with him he dramatically changed once yeah. he became Lars of the Stars the space yeah. captain and even if you think about like Steven left them and they were like in these caves under homeworld like they were like fugitives basically and like my imagination kind of goes like crazy thinking about like well how like they got that ship and like he got like cool clothes somehow yeah like now he's a space we need rebel a, we need a yeah series yeah like he they learned, I would love that they learned to fly that <laughs> ship or whatever yeah how and, does Lars know so much technology space technology how does he know that I, you'll never know <laughs> because he's a genius folks <laughs> Lars is a savant yeah I don't know that. it's just like it was just fun to see him in that setting and even with like the villain is it uh emerald and they're yeah, kind of emerald. like yeah, yeah back and forth like classic like sci-fi tv shows oh, yeah. space captain villain and thing. i love the fan reaction they shipped lars and emerald so hard <laughs> and i was like oh, okay we've only seen her once but okay i love this yeah just like <laughs> they're like good guy villain chemistry was really yeah. like strong we only got to see like a like a small bit of it but it was like she enough. was so good yeah it was enough to make people hilarious. kind of like yeah. be like yeah i'm behind this <laughs> oh man and the way lars was a, like a quasi anime character oh yeah <laughs> i love anime hey. so just seeing all these cutaways and all, all these like brands and everything it were not you know the, the labels of everybody's names i thought that was cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that was a really fun uh episode to board i boarded the later half of it kind of when he's like looking at the phone um and seeing sadie is having this whole like life of her own oh yeah you know he's zooming in on the phone looking at the pictures of her and he's just like like he still has his like by the way people do do that yeah like i (laughs) I remember specifically (laughs) like looking at my hand zoom in like doing the pinch pinch zoom yeah yeah the pinch zoom uh, and it just like felt really like (laughs) Like, good to draw that because he's so, like, invested in, you know, he still has... He still has feelings. Yeah, his feelings for everybody. and insecurities yeah. and whatever. And I'm sure all that comes back to him when he thinks about Sadie. And that's what I love about Lars is... Yeah. Everybody asks me, well, is Lars completely different now? I'm like, no, Lars is always still the same. It's just yeah. he's matured a lot. But yeah. he's still got yeah. all that other stuff in him, you know? Yeah, like, people, I don't know, they change throughout their lives and they don't make a complete, like, flip into like a completely new person there's still stuff there yeah. that you know you recognize and you know you know you still recognize people as what they are but mm-hmm. there's there's just more there to make them a complete person i really want to see how he gets along with everybody once like you know like now that he's gone through so much such a dramatic like you know like maturing experience you know because he really it's cool to see and he's pink now. That's also a thing. Yeah. He's pink. He's got <laughs> so a cool. portal in his And he's got yeah. the scar. Yeah. A yeah. Deep, deep pink scar. What a legend. <laughs> legend. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no, but like, I, well, I mean, what was your reaction specifically to seeing that he was going to like die and come back? What, what was your thoughts on that? Well, Rebecca gave me the heads up on that. She gave it to me like. Okay. Uh, maybe a few episodes before, mm-hmm. we were we were all giggling, and she was like, "Oh, by the way, you know, uh, we got to let the cat out of the bag. You know, you're gonna have this great arc, um, but you know, your character is eventually gonna die. But just just like for, for, just for a second, yeah. And then, but he's gonna be brought <laughs> back. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. That's what she said. <laughs> and I was like, "Cool, cool." You yeah. Know, as an actor, I love doing that stuff. So I thought that was awesome. It was played pretty quickly too in the episode. I feel like when we pitched it, you know, you're kind of clicking through drawing. So you kind of have uh, a bit of a timing difference. Like, I think there was like a longer pause between Steve and like them being like, yeah, we got out of that situation. And then seeing that Lars had passed and then him being resurrected. But it played pretty quickly. So I, f- I'm, I always think about like kids that are going to see that, you know, are they going to be like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, like I, I love how <laughs> it played really quickly. But there was just like that little moment mm-hmm. that just like very brief pause yeah, where we enough. all know just enough yeah. you know 
And I think that was the great thing about it. It was just enough so everybody's on the same page. And it was heartbreaking how the other gyms, like, they don't understand, you know, that, like, <laughs> it's not normal for people to change colors. And, you know, he's not, he's he's dead. And, like, and that your like body, they didn't get that at your all. Your body's yeah. still there. You didn't poof, but you don't, like, move anymore. What, what's going on? Yeah, like, that, <laughs> I love that, too, how it was kind of new for everybody. They're like, yeah. what's happening? Yeah, they didn't get the gravity of the situation. It was like heartbreaking, and and I think it was Rebecca who told me that initially they they had considered like putting the um, resurrection at the start of the next episode or something. Yeah, I think that's oh yeah what yeah we had it pitched as because they were like a few connected episodes where he was just you know they were on Homeworld, right. the trial happened, they were all running around. Um, that would be super heavy though if you just yeah. like left an episode yeah. not knowing what happened to Lars. Yeah. yeah. If they just ended on that, I don't know. I would be. I, <laughs> it would have been horrible. Like, you know, like some kids watching at home and they're just like, "Oh um, my god!" No. You know? <laughs> and even thinking about like, like if you don't see it when it airs, like you might just catch that one episode and you're not able to see the next one. Right? Yeah. When is like, the next episode going to come out? I'm yeah. going crazy. So yeah. I'm glad yeah, yeah. we handled it all like within one. I episode. think it was handled perfectly. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, what do you okay so what do you want to see for Lars next what what's your ideal for Lars in the future well I want to see Lars just meet up with everybody I want to see what all everybody else like everybody on earth their reaction to this sort of new transformed Lars you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I want to see that but I also I mean I want to see Lars in his own show (laughs) (laughs) I I kind of see Lars as like this intergalactic like time hopper solving crimes fixing mistakes in history space crimes (laughs) (laughs) one other thing I wanted to ask is he doesn't have any songs Lars has never sung a song would you what are your thoughts would you want to do something like that I feel like Lars not that he doesn't need a song but he's (laughs) I feel like a song is a very like transformative thing for the characters like they sing a song when like they're really like solid in their feelings in that moment and like oh, I never thought Lars, about that. Lars has to get to that point where he's like Lars has to get a handle on his feelings yeah and <laughs> yeah, then he can, he can sing so if that happens cool if it doesn't I don't I don't think it's that's like a negative thing either because I feel like he's gotten a lot of good development um but I don't know I'm, I'm like trying to think like what would Lars's song even I would love to sing <laughs> I'd like I to hear Rebecca, it <laughs> but the problem is here's the problem I don't have very good rhythm everybody else can sing really well I, I have this problem with rhythm I can hold them up but I don't, I, I'm like you're too early Matt nope nope now you're too late you, you gotta come in on the beat or else you can't sing this whole solo <laughs> But if Lars was to sing, this is what I think it would be. I think it would be this, like, intergalactic rock song Mm -hmm. with this, like, funky EDM bass. And it would be totally cosmic, and it would be a rock ballad to Sadie. Wow. Oh, my god! If I can handle that. (laughs) Yeah, from space to earth. (laughs) Fluorite's on the drums. Yeah. Yeah. That that would be be pretty. Yeah. (laughs) I just don't have... (laughs) <laughs> I'm like trying to like picture it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and talking to me. No problem. Thanks for oh, having thank us. Thank you. The Steven Universe podcast is produced by Stacy Para, Charles Abadje, and Conrad Montgomery. Special thanks to Rob Sorcher, Cartoon Network Studios, The Crew Universe, and Turner Studios in Atlanta. And thanks to all of you guys for listening every week. We really appreciate it. And if you don't want to miss an episode, please subscribe to the Steven Universe podcast at Apple Podcasts. And please leave us a rating and review while you're there. You can also find the Steven Universe podcast for free on Spotify and on Amazon and Google Smart Speakers. I'm Mackenzie Atwood, and I'll see you next time. Bye.